Hey, everybody. Welcome to Oregon State University's Permaculture Design Pro Office Hours. This is for the summer and fall class. And this is our ninth session. So welcome to everybody listening afterwards and welcome to Noah, who's, who's on today. Um, we're going to start with Noah's question. And it's a good one. And it gets into how do I find the right plant for my conditions. And so we'll kind of take a look at this question in a global context, and then we'll get down to specifics. So Noah's question are, what are some uh, narrow coniferous trees good for hedging in tight spaces zone three, ideally looking for bird habitat and food also emerald cedar and Rocky mountain juniper are what I was thinking off the top of my head or dwarf versions of, of cedar uh, trees that are on site already. So it's a great question. And uh, it, it, it gets at this global question of how do I find that right plant? And for those of us pre the resource I'm about to talk to you about, um, we had things like uh, David Jackie and Eric Toynes and Myers uh, edible forest gardens, or we had reams and reams and reams of plant lists, or as I got into it, I started to digitize those plant lists and then would search them by their columns. But um Daniel Halsley and Paula Westmoreland made the Natural Capital Plant Database, which is a brilliant, um, brilliant uh, natural capital plant database, which is a brilliant uh, website that allows us to search any plant and also to search by plant association. So when we're searching for plants, we have our full plant list here, or we have our search for plants. We can also search by polyculture, also called guild. And so basically for Noah's question, I put in uh, evergreen shrub first, because I was curious what it would be. I put zone three, because generally when you take a look at the USDA and Canadian zones, when they get down to the one, two, and three, they're roughly the same. We could also take a look at zone two. Um, wasn't too worried about height and spread because we're working with shrubs anyways. And then I put hedge. That's all I did. I, I, I did wind break too when I searched in there before. Okay. Well, if you're doing hedge, you have to specify, you know, is this a hedge that's going to be a wind break or is this going to be just a small tight hedge? So with the information you gave me, I went with that. But yeah, if, if you're okay. looking for it to break wind as well, how high do you want this to be? Uh, ideally, like there's there's a fence there, but it's right on the north side of the property coming in. And, and I was going to do some a bit on the west. The west, I'm not concerned as much because there's not power lines or like a shed close, but just in this little strip to kind of to to block the wind. It's a bit of a tighter space. So I'm guessing like I don't know, like anything six to ten feet. Like anything is just above higher than the, the yeah. The so still still going to be pretty pretty small. Yeah, um, yeah. So I I wouldn't necessarily put wind break in at ten, and so we're definitely getting a smaller. Uh, set of of particulars because when we looked at the I looked at this originally we got uh, probably double um, so yeah so things like weeping hemlock mountain holly common juniper dwarf scotch pine scotch slim jim pine um, rose bay rhododendra and alberta dwarf spruce all seem like really good uh, decisions and then what we would do is we'd go into these and start to take a look at their spreads and see if they they made sense for the canopy. Uh, size uh, on that mm -hmm. area. You know, if you're looking at something quite columnar, something you can cut, juniper is great. Um, uh, the holly will also be quite nice. The, you know, the pines and the spruce aren't going to love being cut as much. Um, yeah. And you'll tend to get some, some browning patches and some bald patches unless you treat them really, really lovingly. But um, that gives us kind of a smaller set of conversations as well to, to choose from. But you could try some of these other ones, especially some of the different junipers and just, you know, taking a look into them as plants and seeing yeah. what they're more about and where they might fit well within your site. Has there anything that you've worked with specifically? I guess that was more my question. Something that you mm -hmm. have worked with specifically that you think does well for that sort of job? Juniper, you know, ju juniper, juniper okay. uh, depending on your water requirements and your soil requirements, juniper is going to be able to be formed really nicely if you are looking for that hedge idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and like, how much space do you have in terms of linear feet? I, I think like the width wise is probably going to be like, well, I could probably go as much as like two to three meters or something like that. As my guess, it's about okay. six to eight feet uh, along, maybe a little longer. I can, I can just pull and put my site in here and we can look. Sure. Pops up there roughly to scale in there, but um, but yeah, something like that. And then it's probably about no, it's probably must be about closely, yeah, three meters by like one meter, something like that. I'm guessing four meters, like 
there's enough space i think in there to or, yeah so it's just that that, that top space but uh, here if you scroll down to, to maybe my zone one slide i should just put that link in it'll go right to uh this one uh that's the water i uh, know sorry i should have just linked it right to there that's my fault i apologize uh zone one keep if you keep going down four slides, I think is what we're looking for where the plants start to come in. Yeah. The water. Yeah. So right at the top there, I've, I've put in sort of four that I think would be a good spot beside the, the composter in there. Okay. And generally you're, what you're trying to do is you're trying to make uh, basically a, a wind hedge. Yeah. Yeah. Like up above, like where the, beside the other side of the composter that grayed out, it's um, a big lilac bush behind there. There's a big garage that covers that space. So I want to put something in there. And then on that West corner above the the red line, just in that, that North Northwest corner just mm -hmm. to kind of bl block the block that North wind when it does come. And how high is the existing fence? The existing fence is six feet. Right? It's six. Okay. So yeah. the other thing you could look at is something that's actually going to come up and start to break wind above six feet. So yeah. you, you could look at something that is uh, predominantly quite bushy, something like a holly actually might work really well. Um, okay. Only because it is going to bush out and it's going to spread really nicely. Because if you end up going with uh, some of the other conifers, you're going to get more of a pointed situation. And especially because, yeah. you know, just kind of drawn this out here to to talk about it um, a little bit. So if, if we've got our, our, our fence called six feet, and let's say we start to like play with this idea, if you start working with trees that are columnar um, and more pointed, you're not really getting that hedging effect, that windbreak no. effect, right? And if we go with something like juniper, juniper will will do pretty well. But when we're thinking like we want to actually create a little bit of of blockage, you know, just thinking it through here, you know, something like that would probably give you a bit more of the blocking you're looking at. And okay. the thing is, is that when this happens, so I'll do a little. Um, I'll do a little cross section here. That should be ground. So what'll happen is the wind will come up and it'll hit a totally impermeable uh, area and it'll basically buff it. It'll go directly up. So it'll come up like this and pop. And so you'll usually get a hundred percent distribution or like 90 to 80% translation of that wind that, that pops up. And then mm -hmm. what'll happen is whatever is here is going to dis is basically going to to interrupt it. And, and normally within hedgerows, what we get is we've got uh, our height and that height uh, times 10 is usually what we're going to see across here. So um, mm -hmm. if this is 10 feet um, or if this is six feet and you're hoping for a 10 foot, 12 foot high, then you're probably looking at a hundred feet of, um, of perceivable windbreak, which is, I think is probably going to be fine for your area. Yeah, roughly for the property. Yeah. Yeah. So the main thing here is just, you know, if you had a little bit more space, I'd probably work with something like where we were doing, let me just get rid of a few of these. I'd probably, if this were I, I'd probably go with something that's more sturdy, uh, something like a, uh, that's so interesting. It doesn't want to change. Um, I'd probably do something like a columnar conifer, and then I'd probably do a holly if you had the space for it, only because- okay chances are what will happen is that those columnar um, spruce or or pine are going to to break that wind a lot more readily whereas the holly will get the full brunt of it so what this would look like is the pines would be in front but again you'd be moving further back and you've got some access issues here so yeah. you know i don't think it's a perfect solution by any stretch of the imagination but i think probably a holly um and maybe a juniper as a as a secondary right. Uh, might be might be useful there yeah this yeah this might be the shape but that whole that whole i'm going to cut that lilac back it's getting quite big and fill that space in. so i will probably use that strategy or something like that in, mm -hmm. in there well, that's yeah. great thank you yeah you're welcome yeah no worries any other questions uh not ton oh i guess maybe we could look at my, my water too like i had some some water sure. ideas i guess i should ask if they're feasible <laughs> sure yeah let's do it what's like a, that would be like a slide or two above that one, I believe. Here, okay. You can also pull. Proposed water. Uh, yeah, this is the water one right there. Okay. So there's, um, right at the at the garage. That's where the downspout comes down. So I was thinking about in behind that mock orange. There's some space in there if you trim it back a bit to put like a, a thousand liter tote. Mm -hmm. Um, 
just so that there's some storage space and then running a, a line there and then essentially putting some sort of split or diverter that will go into the pond and then into that back space to water all the conifers and then the overflow of the pond coming down to basically soak and fill the annual beds. Yep. Uh, and it's a nice sort of divider between that and the grass and a little feature like that. Yep. Yeah, that all looks really good. So basically taking your garage water, putting it into at least one IBC tote, and then it's overflow coming this way, coming over into the pond and overflowing out into the annuals. Yeah, that looks okay. great. Um, I imagine if you if you do end up wanting to plant down here, having it terminate in a hugo culture or a swale trail, these are swales that we also fill up with wood chips so that way they can um, they can be walked upon. And this I think, is, I think, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Go, keep going. I was, I was going to say, I think in this next space, they I might, I might, I've been debating, put a second pond. Cause there's a big runoff here. Cause she really mm -hmm. wants to plant like a bunch of cranberries and stuff like that. So I was trying to maybe this lowest part, create a little bit of like a, a wet Martin, well, I guess not marshy, but super wet, yeah. more rain garden strip that all the cranberries would come. So it eventually just all flow out this corner into the, into the back alley. Perfect. Where it just goes and drains off. Yeah, generally with rain gardens, what you want to do is you want to do, you know, a terrace or two or a drop level. So basically what it looks like is you've got a couple of okay. levels to it. Yeah. And usually what you end up doing is you end up planting into that first level, uh, depending on the okay. plant itself. Um, and generally what ends up happening and kind of like what we're seeing here is that if there's an opportunity from the house and the shed, or if that's what S means, um, uh, and also solarium. solarium. Um, is that you can do something nice like this where you've got sort of a dry creek bed. So you've got uh, the ability to you know, put a couple of rocks and have that come over as a, a little feature, maybe a little bridge over it. And then yeah. as that flows in, that'll you know fill up, be a little retention uh, basin area, and then can overflow probably at this top area. That can overflow out to alleyway or, or something of that nature. Yeah, that makes okay. sense. Okay, super. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, good. And thanks for pointing me to that. Though I didn't realize those sites at the the top. I guess for anyone else listening to this, at the very top of the the template to go through the other student sites, been super helpful. Oh yeah, uh, to go through complete ones. It's been nice, like going through everyone else's work, but to be able to kind of see it systematically has been good as well. Yeah, and actually, um, uh, we just got greenlit to uh, transfer and start to compile this into a searchable database. So. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, we'll 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 start to be collecting assignments and uh, completed assignments from students all over oh, right, the so. all over the OSU PDC, and then um, it'll be a searchable database that you can search from Copen Geiger or Hardness Zone or um, you know what have you. So yeah, looking forward to having that as a resource in the next couple of years. It's amazing yeah, how nice. much has been built within this program and the, just the resource that's available to folks. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, we also, yeah, especially seeing what other people are doing, especially if you can see that it comes through and works or not. <laughs> right. Similar, exactly. similar zones and ideas. Exactly. Yeah. So exactly. Great. Let them test it. Cool. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I won't keep you too long. Last week we spent a lot of time. But it's just me. <laughs> I just had I just had a couple of questions. So I'll just get back to work on my stuff. And Perfect. Well, thanks for stopping in, Noah. Cool. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Looking forward to your final work. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. Yeah, you too. Bye now. Bye.